What's up, Woods Edge students? I hope you guys have had a fantastic weekend. We are in our last week of 2020 2.0, and we have talked about over the last three weeks our vision and our mission as a student ministry. And this year of 2020 has been absolutely crazy. And it would be really easy to just say, hey, let's scrap 2020, let's move on to 2021. But we believe that God is going to do even greater things this fall than we could ever ask or imagine. And so we wanted to dive into our vision and our mission as a student ministry as we head into the fall so we are ready for all that God wants to do. Week one, we talked about that our vision is that Houston would be known as a city of God. Week two and week three, we talked about the first two pieces of our mission, which are love Jesus and journey together. This week, we are talking about our final piece of our mission, bring hope. We're talking about how we need to bring hope. What do you think is the most popular movie series of all time? Give you a hint. It's not Star Wars. It's not Lord of the Rings or the Hobbit movies. It's not even James Bond. It's not Harry Potter. It is the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yes, it is the highest grossing film series of all time. And my theory is because they are filled with hope. Almost every single movie is exactly the same. It starts out with a superhero who seems absolutely amazing. They seem unstoppable. You're mesmerized by their story, by their powers, by their courage and their integrity and all of these aspects of these superheroes. But then they meet a super villain. And in every single movie, no matter how strong the superhero seems, they meet this villain and all of a sudden, there's a point in the movie where everything seems hopeless. It seems like there's no way they could win. There's no way that this superhero could possibly overcome. They are hopeless. And then out of nowhere, something always happens and you get a little glimmer of hope. And it's that moment in the movie where the music starts to rise and your heart starts to beat faster. And if you weren't sitting in a movie theater, you'd be like, yeah, yeah, you'd be freaking out, right? Okay, because all of a sudden there is hope. There's a chance that things are going to turn around. We love hope. As people, we were created to experience hope. When you are hopeless, it is one of the most miserable, one of the most life-taking experiences you can ever have. Because even if things are bad, if your circumstances are bad, if your struggles seem impossible, but you still have hope, you have this little glimmer and you have this little thing in your head that says things can turn around. But when you get to a point where you're hopeless, that's a bad, bad place to be. In the Marvel movies, it's amazing because you see like Endgame was the epitome of this, right? Because you have Thanos who seems unstoppable and then he is fighting some of the original Avengers, Captain America, Iron Man, Thor, and they are going head to head with Thanos and it looks like they are going to lose and out of nowhere, everyone starts popping up, okay? You know, they do the Doctor Strange, <laughs> and then everyone starts popping up into this scene and all of a sudden you're filled with hope. They can do this. Everyone is back. Everyone is going to take on Thanos and they're finally going to win because you can be filled with hope. And that is what we are called to do in this world. Bring hope. Let's take a look at our Bible story today. It comes from the book of Mark chapter 9 verses 14 through 27. When they returned to the other disciples, they saw a large crowd surrounding them, and some teachers of religious law were arguing with them. When the crowd saw Jesus, they were overwhelmed with awe, and they ran to greet him. What is all this arguing about? Jesus asked. One of the men in the crowd spoke up and said, Teacher, I brought my son so you could heal him. He is possessed by an evil spirit that won't let him talk. 
And whenever this spirit seizes him, it throws him violently to the ground. Then he foams at the mouth and grinds his teeth and becomes rigid. So I asked your disciples to cast out the evil spirit, but they couldn't do it. Jesus said to them, you faithless people, how long must I be with you? How long must I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. So they brought the boy. But when the evil spirit saw Jesus, it threw the child into a violent convulsion and he fell to the ground with writhing and foaming at the mouth. How long has this been happening? Jesus asked the boy's father. He replied, since he was a little boy, the spirit often throws him into the fire or into water, trying to kill him. Have mercy on us and help us if you can. What do you mean if I can? Jesus asked. Anything is possible if a person believes. The father instantly cried out, I do believe, but help me overcome my unbelief. When Jesus saw that the crowd of onlookers was growing, he rebuked the evil spirit. Listen, you spirit that makes this boy unable to hear and speak, he said. I command you to come out of this child and never enter him again. Then the spirit screamed and threw the boy into a violent convulsion and left him. The boy appeared to be dead. A murmur ran through the crowd as people said, he's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and helped him to his feet, and he stood up. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for giving us hope. Lord, thank you for sending your son to this world that as we were hopeless, as we were dead in our sin with no escape, that God, you sent your son to die on the cross, to rescue us, to fill us with hope and give us a future. God, you are so good. Help us to see your hope. And Lord, help us to bring that same hope, the hope of Jesus, the good news into the world in everything that we do. We love you. In Jesus' name. And all God's children said, amen. Okay, let's take a look at this story because what's amazing is you see a story of hopelessness and all of a sudden everything turns around in a moment. As we start the story, we start kind of in the middle of something strange happening. It says, when they returned to the other disciples. So, if you've ever heard the story of the transfiguration, Jesus had actually gone up onto a mountain with three of his closest disciples. And in that moment, he starts like floating and glowing and he's surrounded by Elijah and Moses. And it's this insane, crazy, amazing experience. And so Jesus has just experienced that. Jesus's disciples, three of them have just experienced that and they're making their way down the mountain. And as they get to the bottom, they see a very strange scene. Jesus walks up and his disciples, the other nine, are arguing with some of the teachers of the law, some of the Pharisees. And they are arguing so loudly that other people have surrounded them. They're watching what's happening and there's tons of people arguing. And so Jesus walks up and he's like, what is going on? You have the Pharisees that are mad. You have the disciples that are mad. You have the crowd that is mad. And Jesus walks in to this hostile situation. And he says, what is happening? And out of nowhere, this dad stands up in the middle of the crowd. And he says, my son is sick. He has a spirit inside of him. And it throws him into violent convulsions, seizures. He starts foaming at the mouth. And we don't know what to do. This dad is hopeless. Okay. Can you imagine? This isn't his first stop. Okay. Think about it in terms of our day and age. This dad probably took his son to the doctor at first. He found maybe a friend to pray over him. Maybe he found some friends to ask their advice. And then they're like, Hey, this is serious. You should probably do something. So maybe he takes him to a doctor. And the doctors see him multiple times and they can't figure out what's wrong with him. And so the doctors end up saying, we, we, can't, we can't do anything for you. And that hopelessness starts to build. And the dad finally, maybe he says, okay, I've heard of this Jesus guy. I've heard that uh, maybe he can do something. Or maybe he had heard that the Pharisees, maybe I'll take him to the pastor. Maybe I'll take him to the church leaders. 
And so the dad takes him to this crowd where there are church leaders and Jesus' disciples there. And he says, hey, I need you to heal my boy. And we go on and we read that the disciples couldn't heal him. The disciples could not heal this man's boy. He still was having seizures, foaming at the mouth. The pastors, the teachers, they couldn't heal the boy. Imagine the hopelessness that this dad feels. That there's no answer. No one can fix this. If Jesus' disciples and the teachers of the law can't do something for me, is this just how my son's going to be forever? And then finally he sees Jesus coming down the mountain. And Jesus says, what's going on? And he speaks up and he says, this is what's going on with my boy. He has seizures and I brought him to your disciples and they couldn't heal him. I brought him to the teachers of the law. They couldn't heal him. Nothing has worked. I need you to do something. And he brings the boy to Jesus. And what happens? The boy immediately in that moment falls into another seizure that the dad would have had to have thought, oh my goodness, even right here as I'm standing in front of Jesus, this guy who's raised people from the dead, who's healed all kinds of people, I'm, I'm here with him and my boy can't be healed. He's still suffering. That even as he walks up to Jesus, his boy has a seizure. The hopelessness is growing. And Jesus says, how long has this been happening? And the dad says, it's been happening since he was a little boy. It throws him into the fire. It throws him into the water. The spirit is trying to kill him. And there's nothing we can do. Nothing has worked. And this dad says, have mercy on us. Help us if you can. He's hopeless. He is broken. He doesn't have anywhere else to turn. He doesn't think there's ever going to be healing for his son. And Jesus says, what do you mean if I can? What do you mean if I can heal him? Jesus says, if, if anyone believes anything is possible. And this part right here gets me. The dad, in his hopelessness, he feels like everything I've tried, there's been no answers. I'm hopeless. He says, I do believe, but help me overcome my unbelief. And I love that. That's so real. That's so authentic. This dad's saying, Jesus, I want to believe, but I'm, but I'm hopeless. Nothing else has worked. And I really want to believe that you can heal him. I really do. But I just don't know. I'm in such a bad place. I feel so hopeless. I feel like nothing can help. Help my unbelief. And in that moment, Jesus speaks in a way that only Jesus can straight to the evil spirit. And he says, listen, you spirit that makes this boy unable to hear and speak. I command you to come out of this child and never enter him again. And in that moment, he is healed. He's thrown to the ground. The spirit leaves him and the crowd is in awe. Can you imagine something so powerful happening? I'm imagining that the crowd just falls silent and they're staring. They think the boy's dead. And all of a sudden the whispers, what, what's happening? Is he dead? I think he is. He's not moving. What? He has to be dead. And Jesus looks at the crowd. He grabs the boy's hand and he lifts him up to his feet healed. I love this story of hope. This dad was hopeless, even to the point where he's talking to Jesus. His son is right there in front of Jesus and he's having seizures. And Jesus says, do you want me to heal him? And the dad says, yeah, if you can. And this dad says, help my unbelief. I, 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 I want him to be healed. I want him to be better. And he still in that moment feels kind of hopeless. And Jesus, when no one else could, when nothing else could, brings hope to that father. Amazing. 
He brings hope like only Jesus can. And it is our job, it is our privilege to bring a hope to this world the same way that Jesus brought hope to that dad. No matter how hopeless someone's situation is, no matter how broken someone is, no matter how depressed, no matter how anxious, we can bring hope. I love that our mission says bring hope because the, the definition of the word bring is to come to a place with someone or something. To come to a place with someone. We are bringing hope. Who is hope? Hope is Jesus. We are bringing Jesus everywhere we go. I love the word bring because it's an active word. It's not a passive word. We're not waiting for something to happen. We're not waiting to see and maybe we'll react. Maybe we'll just take in the scene. No, we are bringing hope. It's an active word. We are on the offensive when it comes to bringing hope to the world. If we have a relationship with Jesus, we can bring hope wherever we go. We are full of the Holy Spirit, which means every second of every day, God is using to bring people to himself. A lot of times we're not aware of it. A lot of times we're too busy to see it or think about it. But God is with us. Jesus is bringing hope everywhere we go if we are believers and followers of Jesus. This is going to be really bold, but I really want you guys to capture the mission of who we are at Woods Edge Student Ministry. And so I'm going to be really honest right now. And I'm going to tell you that the mission of bringing hope is not on me as your pastor. It's not my sole job and my sole responsibility to bring hope to your friends. I'm not the only one that God has tasked with bringing hope. I'm also going to go as far to say that you waiting for us to throw an event is not bringing hope. You trusting that we market well enough that your friends would come to the church is not bringing hope. And honestly, I would even maybe go as far to say that you simply throwing out an invitation to a friend passively in, in passing, hoping that maybe they'll come, I would go as far to say that that's kind of bringing hope, but I think that that's a cop out. I think that bringing hope is more than that. And I think that God is calling us as Woods Edge Student Ministry to more than that. You can bring hope. You can bring hope. It doesn't have to depend on me. You are full of the Holy Spirit. You have everything that you need. Even if you don't feel like it sometimes, you can bring hope. Truthfully, it is not my job to teach you how to invite your friends to church so I can bring them hope. It's my job. The Lord has tasked me to disciple you and teach you how to be so in love with Jesus that you can bring hope everywhere you go. And that is so important to me. My heart for the future of Woods Edge Student Ministry is that we would all be on mission, that we would all be so focused on bringing hope every second of every day, everywhere, any way we can, that we would see more students come to know Jesus in a loving relationship with Jesus than we have ever seen before. And I don't even care if they're within the walls of our student ministry. I, exp I want to see that happen in your schools. I want you to be leading people to the Lord and talking about him in the locker room, at a track meet, at your band competition. I want all of us to be able to bring hope everywhere we go. That's how we see more students come to know Jesus than we have ever seen before. 
I want to see you guys leading Bible studies all over the city. I want to see you guys leading prayer meetings all over the city. I want to see you guys starting clubs at your school where you can have people come after school and you can encourage them and love on them, give them some food, hang out with them. I want to see you guys praying with your friends at school, that you guys are sharing the gospels in your classes, on your teams, with your friends. I want to see you guys having friends that believe different things than us. That all of your friends are not people that go to this student ministry. And it's important to have your core group of people. Jesus had his core group of people that thought the way that he thought, that lived life the way that he lived life. But it's so important to us bringing hope that we are surrounded by other people that are not like us as well, that look different than us, that sound different than us, that believe differently than us, that are interested in different things than we're interested in. We have to be surrounded by people outside of the four walls of this church to be able to bring hope. And that's not just for you guys, that's for me too. I've gotta be challenged every day to get out of my bubble and be confident in who God has called me to be so that I can bring hope. And you can do the same thing. You can bring hope everywhere you go. And as we do this together, we can equip you. I want to teach you, our staff, your journey group leaders, we want to teach you how to lead a Bible study. We want to teach you how to lead a prayer meeting. We want to equip you to do everything you feel God calling you to do. But it's not on us as leaders and pastors to do it all. It's on all of us. This mission of bringing hope is on all of us. That's the way that the gospel moves forward. That's the way that people are saved. That's the way that people are freed from chains of addiction and depression and anxiety. That's the way that we see the divorce rate go down. That's the way that we see addiction rates go down. That's the way that we see our city changed and transformed is we are all bringing hope. We got to take ownership of it. We have to. So here's my challenge to you guys this week. I want you guys to really, really take some time and pray. God, what would you have me do? What? do you want me to do this fall? What do you want me to do this week? And I want you to really pray and listen, spend unhurried time with the Lord so that he can speak to you and show you exactly what he wants to show you. Maybe he's going to say, I want you to start a Bible study at the McDonald's by your school. I want you to start a Bible study at the Starbucks or the Dunkin' Donuts. I want you to start a prayer meeting every Thursday night, every Saturday morning. I want you to invite your friends to spend the night on Friday night and then Saturday morning you guys have a prayer meeting. Like, I don't know what God would call you to do, but I want you guys to pray about it because that's how we bring hope. And I'm gonna give you some really practical tools as you're praying through what could this look like? How could could I bring hope? God works through our gifts and our talents, and our passions. God has wired you a certain way. And so a lot of times I feel like it's easy for us to say, yeah, you know what? I'm going to do what someone else is doing because that's all we've seen modeled. But God has wired you with certain gifts and certain talents, and he wants to use those gifts and talents and those passions to be able to see you completely transform your school, transform your neighborhood. But if you need any help from us, we are here for you. Pray through your gifts and your talents. Think of creative ways that you could use those things for God's glory to be able to bring hope to all kinds of people. And if you have any questions, if you want to just help process through things, we're here for you guys. Talk to your journey group leaders. Reach out to our office. Reach out to us on social media. We are here to help you guys and journey together with you, walk through this stuff with you, but we all need to bring hope. God's given you everything that you need. You are fully equipped and you can do this. We believe in you. Bring hope this week. Let's pray. Lord, you have brought us hope. 
God, you have filled us up to overflowing because of how good you are. Just like this father brought his son in this hopeless state and Jesus came on the scene and everything was different, Lord. When you came into our lives, everything changed. And that doesn't mean that life is always going to be easy, but God, I pray that you would fill us with your hope, that God, you would help us to experience your love and your grace every single day. That God, as we struggle with certain things, that God, we would not be overwhelmed by them, but that God, we would have that glimmer of hope, that we would know that you have a huge plan for us. And God, I pray that as we pray through what you would call us to this school year, that God, you would speak to every student's heart, that they would know exactly what they're supposed to do to bring hope to their friends and their loved ones. And that God, we would see our families change. We would see our schools change, our city change, because you bring hope. Fill us up, Lord, and help us overflow into everyone we come in contact with. We love you. Thank you for loving us first. In Jesus' name, amen. Guys, we can do this. Let's bring hope. It's on all of us. We will do it together. We will work through it together. We'll struggle through it together. We will celebrate together. Let's bring hope. We love you guys. We are praying for you guys. We hope you have a great week. We cannot wait to see you in person. Still don't know quite when that's going to be, but we cannot wait. Hope you have a fantastic week. Peace.